Hello everyone, welcome back uh, for our optimization uh, demo for the second uh, video. Uh, this video, last time we gave you an uh, overview of the uh, SciPy library and for single variables and uh, multi-variable with some minor constraints. And, <clears throat> and today our focus is on this uh, multi-variable uh, minimizing software. So we'll give you some uh, reviews of uh, what we have on the SciPy optimize package. The first part is the the SciPy uh, optimize library uh, uh, have uh, can solve so-called unconstrained and constrained optimization and also can uh, deal with multi uh, variables <coughs> or single variables function. And the algorithm has uh, uh, many algorithms implemented here, <coughs> and mostly of them are well tested over several decades. And for example, the uh, quasi Newton method BFGS, the Nether and Me methods, simplex, uh, Nether Me simplex uh, search method, and Newton's methods, and conjugate gradient methods. And Kobilat, and Kobilat is a linear approximation, successive uh, linear approximation uh, solver. <clears throat> and then the last one was so, so called uh, successive quadratic programming, uh, uh, combining linear and quadratic approximation. Also very powerful, the SciPy Optimize a package uh, can solve, uh, has a whole bunch of uh, global optimization uh, subroutines and using simulating annealing, uh, genetic algorithm, and taboo search, and end colony <coughs> optimization, okay. Some, uh, most of them are based on the so-called evolutionary algorithm uh, have been introduced in the past uh, 30 years or so. One of the uh, things we're going to consider today is also uh, introduce the so-called least square minimization problem and uh, next time we're going to focus more on the curve feeding algorithm. And these are the algorithms uh, very popular for solving engineering problems with either curve feeding or uh, model approximation and so on. And of course, last time we already introduced the scalar uh, univariate function minimizer, and we will continue uh, talking about the so-called rule finder for finding the rules we're using several uh, different algorithms. The rule finder is, is more of a one-dimensional search for the rule finders, and uh, frequently we use these as the sub-algorithm for the line search. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> lastly, the, the so-called uh, the multivariate system of uh, linear or nonlinear equation, and these are <clears throat> uh, very popular methods uh, system for uh, engineering pro application and engineering problem, especially for uh, chemical engineering, electrical engineering, and um, mechanical engineers. And <clears throat> All right, let's start our uh, introduction for today, uh, lecture for today. And <clears throat> unconstrained, uh, unconstrained optimization with multivariables function. First, we uh, introduced this function a um, couple of times already. We call the Rosenberg's function with n variables and or uh, it's not very popular, but it's, it is one of the test prob most popular test problem for optimization algorithm. We talk about those in our uh, lectures on chapter uh, eight as well for multivariate uh, uh, unconstrained optimization. This problem is not necessarily con convex, so you can see the, uh, the contour chart, I'm sorry, the 3D surface chart for this algorithm. All right. Um, Last time we talked about using a Nether Me method to solve this, and then we 
today we're going to uh, show you this is what uh, Rosenberg functions usually refer as a valley function or banana uh, banana function because its bottom looks like a banana it's like this all right <clears throat> show you how to solve this initially we can uh, this function is so popular actually the scipy has a already predefined a Rosen book function already called Rosen. So initially we import uh, NumPy and import us uh, from the SciPy optimized uh, package. We import minimizing function and the Rosen function. Okay. But if you <coughs> didn't know the Rosen book function too well, here I have a whole bunch of uh, how to calculate Rosenbrook function, how to calculate the first derivative of Rosenbrook function return as a vector, how to uh, calculate the uh, Hessian, which is the second derivative, and return as a uh, matrix. <clears throat> okay, so if you don't like to use the default Rosenbrook function and you can type uh, here is the you, uh, for you. So x naught is the initial solution, okay? Call uh, starting with the 1.3, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, uh, 1.9, 1.2. So this is the five-dimensional <coughs> Rosenberg function. Um, very simple. I just want to minimize this function and giving the initial conditions right here. <coughs> Okay, uh, using the uh, netter and mean method, and I have uh, some of the options type in here just for your exercise, and <clears throat> giving you uh, t uh, convergence tolerances, and I will try to ask them to uh, spit out all the output and, and everything, and return all the uh, arrays or all the data point they being. Uh, so here are the, you can see after solving, then you see every iteration they have a solution. And that's how the Netter and me algorithm do. So you can basically plot these points and on. So after solving this problem, I print the result in the very bottom of this. So the problem is the final simplex we have. Okay, so we have a whole bunch of simplex so so we call it uh, this netter me function we haven't talked about it but I uh, did this in IMC 780 is a so-called downhill simplex method or sometimes it's referred as a downhill triangular simplex method so it's using uh, resizing or flip as a triangle point also maintain the three point as a triangle simplex and continue doing that and flipping in each direction to find the minimum. So this uh, particular uh, problem, and <clears throat> the objective function is basically zero, optimi uh, optimization terminated successfully, and number of functional evaluation is 571, number of iteration is uh, 339 okay so because each iteration they try at least the three points neighborhood point based on the triangle and they're called a reflect okay and pick the best one so each iteration they at least have a two to three uh, trial um, <clears throat> a success is true which means is get an optimal solution and the optimal solution is in one 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 so this is uh, <clears throat> basically a straightforward method. The netter and mead methods don't need require any of uh, any type of uh, uh, derivative information. It's just using the trial. So if your objective function has uh, trouble with uh, uh, continu continuities and differentiability and those type of thing, and neither meet is a very quick, efficient, and reliable method to solve for the optimal solution. And next, we're trying to explore some of the algorithms used. And 
uh, instead of using BFGS, we already showed that BFGS is uh, uh, very so, uh, efficient for solving smaller problem, but I want to introduce a limited memory version of a BFGS with the trust region. <coughs> Uh, remember that with the original BFGS method, we're using a rank one uh, approximation of uh, update of inverse of a hash. However, um, but each iteration in the BFGS method, we have to uh, maintain an n by n uh, inverse of a hash approximation. So this method is kind of a <coughs> still using a lot of memory. And people start saying, oh, if I can using only the vector operation and without storage the entire Hessian inverse, and would I be okay? Okay, so this algorithm is uh, proposed by Boyd and uh, Nocido, and in I think is in 1997. Yeah, 1997. And this method is actually. Uh, nationally certified called algorithm 778. Uh, the program was uh, written in Fortran and is <coughs> embedded into SciPy, uh, SciPy uh, optimized package using a Fortran wrap, wrap for this algorithm. So you, the underlying uh, algorithm is still executed in Fortran. Um, but uh, it is uh, has an interface to p pass on the Python uh, Python uh, data set. Okay. So remember the original BFGS when we update our new iterate or new solution as x of a k, a k plus one the new uh, solution equals to the current solution minus alpha k is the step size. HK is a reflection uh, matrix, which is uh, uh, basically Hessian inverse approximation, and the gradient of F at the XK. Okay, so here is alpha is the step lines, H is the update every iteration by uh, a certain formula. So this is the formula which is we use. Okay, however, <coughs> instead of update the Hessian inverse, these methods, the limited memory method, using the total k uh, iteration, uh, m iteration, to update. Then we reset it back to the original Hessian. So therefore, we have a limited memory for the number of update we use, so iteration k. So we only keep m iteration of uh, uh, updates uh, on hand. Instead of uh, continuous uh, doing these, uh, the same update like a BFGS rank one up, uh, modification, rank one correction for the entire process, it only do it for uh, M, uh, M iteration, then reset it to, uh, <coughs> to the original hash and reevaluate. And this method turned out to be. Uh, very efficient, can deal with the large scale uh, problems quite efficiently. So it has been pretty popular uh, uh, choices for uh, solving <coughs> uh, solving the uh, large scale uh, optimization problem. And then I have uh, presented uh, the detail uh, shoulder code right here for for your uh, reference if you. Okay, and the BFGS method with a boxed uh, constraint, which is what we call this uh, L infinity constraint, and uh, which is the trust region is equal to a box. So the current iteration to the next iteration, we restrict the size of alpha, so it only moves to the neighborhood of the current solution. And this method has been tested, and the Fortran 77 code has been tested. Uh, from uh, many operation research community, and finally got uh, incorporated into a optimization suite called Lancelor. I give you the uh, hyperlink for 
this software. The software is also <clears throat> uh, available for free, but you have to register with the company, Lancelot or company, to uh, get the source code. It's in Fortran 77. And after Fortran becomes uh, now very popular for the young uh, operation research analysts and or some of the community, computer science community or programmers uh, losing the skill of programming in Fortran. Therefore, the Python pickups, actually they write a Fortran Python API, or we'll call it a wrap, Fortran wrapper, so the programmer, the application people can still using Python to uh, organize their uh, models or set up the data, but the actual solver is using Fortran. So these are the uh, benefit using uh, these uh, so-called Fortran uh, wrapper and uh, SciPy uh, optimized library. The method was uh, very efficient, so. Here we, I write, this is a uh, uh, limited memory BFGS method. Uh, it's affordable for a very large problem. The memory requirement is not a whole lot, okay, compared to uh, BFGS method. Okay. Uh, and also I give you the original uh, documents or the articles uh, related to this uh, limited memory BFGS method for your references right here. With all these presentation of uh, limited memory BFGS method, I, I wanted to give you some ideas of where those uh, algorithms are coming from and how the SciPy library collect them. Here I have uh, using the same thing uh, to solve a Rosenberg function using the limit memory BFGS method or with the so-called trust region. Here I have, again, I'm going to import the minimization Rosenberg function, the de first derivative of a Rosenberg function and the hashing of the Rosenberg function. Again, I'm going to using <coughs> the same initial point x naught and trying to, I'm just mod copy the code and change the uh, method from uh, Nilder and me and to limited memory uh, BFGS. However, the limited memory BFGS method require you to have a so-called Jacobians and Hessian. Uh, I think this one's only needs a Jacobian and which is the first derivative. <clears throat> and I'm trying to display all the result and okay, and the functional torrents is uh, ten uh, ten to minus eight. I print out the solution result. You can see that the function is practically zero. Take, however, this method only requires twenty five uh, functional evaluation. Only twenty three iteration. So the algorithm was very efficient in a sense, uh, at least uh, using less number of uh, <coughs> iteration. However, each iteration actually costs more, uh, more time. Again, uh, status is true, assess successful and status is zero means is get a solution, optimal solution. And the optimal solution is on one, 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 one. Okay. <clears throat> and the accuracy of the solution actually depends on the functional tor uh, the functional torrents we defined right here. <clears throat> so this is a very efficient way I introduced uh, the use of uh, <clears throat> limit memory uh, BFGS method. So now we're kind of getting an idea. See, hey, I can actually just changing the method uh, class and to pick different method four different, uh, using different methods and test it out, which one is more efficient. Yeah, of course you can. And then <clears throat> several different uh, methods require different level of uh, so-called uh, information. Some of them <clears throat> need the function to be first uh, uh, 
uh, first derivative exists, some of the fun uh, method require the function to be uh, uh, have a derivative in the, at least the, to the second order. So that's all not very uh, requirement. So, but neither me method had required no derivative at all. So with this introduced, and I say, okay, we can try the one more. Uh, we'll call it Newton's and conjugate gradient method. Okay, and this is usually referred as an inexact uh, uh, Newton's method in in several. Uh, uh, so-called milestone paper uh, proposing the similar idea. It's combining the, uh, the Newton's method by using the conjugate gradient method to solve at each iteration. Okay, so there are two versions of these uh, uh, Newton's conjugate gradient method uh, in SciPy optimized packages called Newton's CG algorithm. <coughs> And one uh, version is called line search version of uh, Newton CG method. The Newton CG method was <coughs> uh, just using the conjugate gradient at each iteration to solve for the uh, line search problem. Okay, line search problem at uh, each iteration. But the main uh, routines, uh, main loop, still using the North Newton uh, <coughs> second order. Uh, approximation. So you still need a uh, hashing information by just using efficient conjugate gradient method. Uh, later on we're going to introduce how we're using conjugate gradient method to solve a system of linear uh, equations. Basically conjugate gradient method is uh, efficient to solve a <coughs> so-called quadratic program which is the same thing as solving a system of linear equation. <clears throat> okay, so we're using the second order of the Tyler expansion uh, to approximate f and then using uh, conjugate gradient to solve for it. So here we have uh, the equations right here. The B matrix is can be the second derivative and times P and P is the <coughs> A direction each iteration and then we uh, equals to <coughs> negative the gradients and so we solve it as a system of a linear equation gradient of f of k which it means <coughs> the gradient at uh, uh, gradient of f at the uh, xk um, same thing <coughs> all right so this method is also, I presented uh, the detailed implementation, shoulder codes right here. And there's another version of uh, uh, Newton CG algorithms called Trust Region Newton CG method. Very similar to the so-called Levenberg's and Maguire's uh, Newton's method we have. It's proposed in, uh, uh, by Stehow in 1983. So <clears throat> I'm not, I'll give you the original paper, the link to the original paper. So here we're trying to <clears throat> tell you then this method is also, Newton's CG method is also uh, aimed to design it for <clears throat> large scale uh, nonlinear programming problem. Okay, large scale uh, nonlinear programming problem. So this is a uh, what I have in okay to illustrate this uh, how this works we again using uh, the same structure to using Newton CG method um, here the Newton CG method like the limit memory BFGS method uh, the nice things about Newton CG method is still have the quadratic convergences However, the <coughs> BFGF's method only has the super linear uh, convergences. So this method should be uh, at least a little bit faster uh, than the, uh, than the uh, limited memory BFGS method. So I just 
changing the original uh, limit memory BFGS method into uh, Newton CG method. I want to compare these two methods as well. So <coughs> printing all the result, optimization terminates successfully, iteration only 21, functional evaluation 30, gradient evaluation do it uh, 100, uh, 10, uh, 111 time. Uh, we didn't do any of the Hessian because I didn't provide a Hessian. You can provide a Hessian uh, convergence is a little bit faster and also uh, uh, the computational time for each iteration may be uh, a little bit longer. Same thing, we get the same result of objective function, practically zero, okay, and the solution is one, 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 one. All right, I'm going to uh, cut short this uh, video since uh, it's almost 26 minutes. And I will continue using the next lecture video to talk about uh, uh, least square problems. We'll see you in the next video.